Hello, I'm John Smizer, and it's a joy to be with you today as we look into God's Word. We're in the midst of the longest chapter in the Bible, the Psalm 119, where almost every verse has some reference in, in it with God's Word, uh, its statutes, His precepts, His law, His commands. They're, they're wonderful there for us, and uh, as we do yesterday, is to stand in awe, to recognize God's goodness to us, uh, giving us this love letter so that we're not left alone, so we're not hung out to dry, kind of. No, we have somebody who has promised to be there with us, who never leave us nor forsake us. And it's through His Word, His Holy Spirit guides and comes alongside of us and, and lifts us up, dusts us off, and gets us back on the road whenever we take a wrong turn. And today it's a, a, a joy to just uh, prepare our hearts. Uh, today's Saturday and Sunday's coming. And so in preparation, I would encourage you to uh, hunger and ask God to truly, in these passages that we're looking at, you just ask God, God, show me yourself. Show me something new. Reveal yourself to me. Also recognize how I, Lord, have failed you and turn me towards you. So today is a time of preparation as we Look forward to uh, coming together with other believers on a Sunday morning and lifting up His name in a powerful way. So it's a joy to look to His Word now. Psalm 119 verses 121 through 136. I have done what is righteous and just. Do not leave me to my oppressors. Ensure your servant's well-being. Do not let the arrogant oppress me. My eyes fail looking for your salvation, looking for your righteous promise. Deal with your servant according to your love and teach me your decrees. I am your servant. Give me discernment that I may understand your statutes. It is time for you to act, Lord. Your law is being broken. Because I love your commands more than gold, more than pure gold, and because I consider all your precepts right, I hate every wrong path. Your statutes are wonderful, therefore I obey them. The unfolding of your words gives light. It gives understanding to the simple. I open my mouth and pant, longing for your commands. Turn to me and have mercy on me, as you always do to those who love your name. Direct my footsteps according to your word. Let no sin rule over me. Redeem me from human oppression, that I may obey your precepts. Make your face shine on your servant and teach me your decrees. Streams of tears flow from my eyes, for your law is not obeyed. Today I'd ask you to take your Living Life devotional and let's turn to page 112. And uh, we're looking at uh, Psalm 119. We'll begin, uh, it, it begins at verse 121, but I want us to move down to verse 123 as kind of an opener. It talks about somebody like myself. Uh, you notice I've got glasses here to help me with this reading. It says in verse 123, My eyes fail, looking for your salvation, looking for your righteous promise. Sometimes I don't really see clearly. I don't know if you've had an issue with cataracts at some times. They, gave me a new lens in my right eye some time ago. And I do see better, but in my heart, the figurative part of my eyes sometimes miss what God's trying to show me. And I need a pair of glasses sometimes to kind of see, what is it, God, you're trying to talk to me about? And that's what the Bible is good for. These passages out of Psalm 119 are, are, are like lenses that we can 
view the world, view our situation, view ourselves, and, and, and make some changes along the way. So it says, my eyes fail. Looking for your salvation, looking for your righteous promises, sometimes I miss it. When God's given me an open door and I'm kind of stumbling around with, with my eyes shut. There's the problem. Sometimes I shut my eyes to what God's doing in my life and I, I don't listen or I don't look or I don't observe enough of what God's doing. And I encourage you today, as the psalmist here is saying, my eyes fail looking for your salvation, looking for your righteous promises. It says, deal with your servant according to your love and teach me your decrees. When we seem to be stumbling or going a wrong direction, oh Lord, show me the way. Show me your love and guide me. Then down in verse 126, it says, it is time for you to act, Lord. Your law is being broken. Now this is a, a concern that are, are you struggling with the sin that's around you? Now I don't mean I want you to take action and go take a, a stick and hit someone. No, I don't mean that. But does your heart hurt over the issues that what you see people doing on a regular basis? It could be on the internet or it could be on television or whatever the report might be. Does it grieve your heart to see how people are turning their back on the Lord? How they turn their back on what He would have us do. He, he created us, you know, His people, all, not just believers, He created all people. And His desire was to have a good walk and a good relationship with each of us. But sometimes there are those who don't pay attention. As a pastor one time, I told my congregation that, uh, you know, folks, I pray for all of you regularly. I pray for some of you to receive joy of the Lord, but I pray at times that uh, God would break your legs. And they look at me and say, what, what do you mean, pastor? And for me, I want them to know that whatever God needs to do to get their attention, that's what I'm praying for them for. And I hope that it doesn't take a lot to get their attention. You know, a guy like Job, it took a storm and a big fish to get his attention. I wonder what it would take for God to get your attention. Are you strained? Are you going another direction? I pray God is able to speak softly to you and that you hear, that you're attentive to it. The be still and know that I am God is a portion that calls us to quit our struggling, quit our thrashing about and simply wait on the Lord. So it says here, it is time for you to act, Lord. Is it the time for the Lord to act in your life? Then I want to just read a section here for you. It says, uh, I open my mouth and pant, longing for your commands, desiring his word. Verse 132, turn to me and have mercy on me, as you always do to those who love your name. Direct my footsteps according to your word. Let no sin rule over me. Redeem me from the human oppression that I may obey your precepts. Make your face shine on your servant and teach me your decrees. Those are like prayers. Those are like calling out to God, saying, Lord, be near to me. Guide me. When I am being oppressed, Lord, you are my strength. And finally, in that last part, make your face shine on your servant and teach me your decrees. What a wonderful thing to call out for God to do in our lives. Today's passage uh, had a title of Treasuring God's Word. 
And that would be my encouragement to you today, that as you uh, handle this Bible, the devotional, which is printed out God's Word, I pray that you would treasure it in ways that uh, you would some precious heirloom from your family that's been passed from generation to generation. That in some way gives you uh, a clue or a direction to be going. That it in some way is instilling in you a, a confidence in the one who loves you so much. And I pray that you would treasure this thing we call God's Word. Because as we've read and as we see, God's Word is that which is going to comfort us. It's going to open and reveal things to us. It's going to challenge us, us, challenge us. So please, please treasure it. Heavenly Father, we do thank you so much that we are not stumbling around in life on our own, but Lord, you have given to us some uh, instruction manuals, some directions on what to live and how to live life. And I pray, Lord, as each of us, uh, by your Holy Spirit, open your word to us, that we would be receptive, that we would be willing to hear your words to us. Father, we would also, I pray, uh, share those things with those that we love, we hold dear, possibly children, even elder parents. May we comment and say good words to them from your word. In Jesus' name, amen. This program is a great pleasure to be here.